Hey, this is gonna be a quick video because this is kind of an update to a previous video. So that said, you may remember that I had the Arion Thinker. This one happens to be the SE and I have an S. Only difference between the two is one came with a glass bed, one came with a spring steel bed. Uh, had kind of a PEI surface that Honestly, it wasn't that good. I had to use hairspray to make anything stick to it. Um, so what I did is on both these machines, they are both sporting uh, wham bam surfaces just because they're so much better. I mean, there's a lot of cheap surfaces out there you can buy, but really just spend the money on the good stuff and all your problems go away. So both have wham bam. Uh, the thing that was stopping me from completing this project was firmware. Now there was a gentleman in the Arion uh, group that had made the firmware that was currently on this machine. I had upgraded to a BL Touch uh, on the stock uh, hot end, and that was on direct drive that was using the uh, uh, Bowden system. And just to recap from the previous video, which of course you can see up here, if I'm smart I'll remember to tag this. Um, the stock hot end that came with this was frankly terrible. Um, if the Bowden tube wasn't being pushed out of the top, the, <laughs> the therm resistor was basically, the only thing holding the therm resistor in the hot end was the friction from the silicone sock. There was no set screw, nothing in there holding in there. So if you went to go do an, a PID auto tune, uh, or if you noticed your temperatures were all over the place, that was why. So, you know, unfortunately, the bones of the machine are good. It's just that you gotta kind of peel away the junk and put quality stuff back on to turn it into a machine that is reliable. So that's what we did. So the holding point here was, okay, I got it this far, but now I know the version of the Marlin I have on here is several years old. Marlin has updated a gazillion times. I don't keep up with that because I just don't have time. So I reached out to a friend of mine who had helped me in the past, and that's Keith B. I'm gonna give you his information down below. He's very active with the Marlin development. He He's the kind of guy that he's willing to help. So if you're stuck, if you're looking for help with firmware or have questions, I'm gonna give you his information down below. You can reach out to him because we're always looking for a friend in the business kind of thing, and he's been exceptionally helpful to me. I know on GitHub he has his own subscription base, and recently GitHub dropped PayPal, so I know he probably like others lost a lot of people that didn't transfer over to credit cards. They just it expired, they just let it go. So if there's someone that's definitely worthy of your funding and attention and consideration, certainly Keith is the guy. Okay, so with this machine done, we went through and made changes to the firmware and there's so many things that were changed on here that I'm just trying to recall off the top of my head. Now this one has the original E3D V6 hot end, that's what the DDS is shipped with. And one of the things in the firmware is we're not using PID Auto-Tune, we're using MCP something something. It's a different way of maintaining the temperature on the hot end. Uh, it takes into consideration the wattage, you know, the retention. It goes through, it does its own little self-test and it tells you the values to enter. And <laughs> it's just fascinating to see what these things can do now. Uh, he also offered some suggestions on chain as to how the BL Touch works. Uh, you know, rather than the probe going up and down every time it's doing its you know mesh work, uh, it's, it does the whole BL Touch you know uh, G29 process a lot faster than before. Um, I mean, I could go on, and I'm sure there was a lot of other things he could have turned on. I know linear advance is something that we haven't even touched yet, but that's been enabled. So yeah, so this machine has a lot of potential. The other thing that's kind of fun about this machine is, you'll see in the close up here, since this was the first one I did, my wiring harness is a little bit of a mess. <laughs> so when I got to the second machine, I went ahead and did all the hardware upgrades of this one. This one is way cleaner as far as all the wiring goes. Now, I'm pretty excited to tell you about the difference between this machine and this machine. This one, now, E3D recently came out with the Revo 6. So Revo is their new uh, nozzle system where basically you unscrew it and the whole assembly comes out and you can quickly plug in a new nozzle. Uh, I have them over here somewhere, I should be showing them off. But uh, you know, it makes quick change a reality for the E3D system. So I was checking and it said that, yeah, it, you know, it's the same size as an E3D V6. It should fit in there just fine. I reached out to Bontech who said, yeah, try it. So I'm happy to report that if you happen to find a couple of these DDSs available, or if you have a DDS system and decide you want to upgrade it, the E3D uh, Revo 6 will fit in there just fine. Uh, I didn't experience any huge issues as far as the uh, Z offset. I didn't find it to be you know bigger or, or shorter. Uh, both of these with their Z offsets are under a millimeter. So I mean, that's, <laughs> that's really quite great. 
And I'm trying to remember, yeah, so all of that fits in there. So if I want to uh, quickly change the nozzle out of this guy, I can do it worlds faster with this one than this one. So that's pretty much it for this time. Like I said, both machines are going to go into their enclosures here shortly. Uh, I have all kinds of, as you can see here, I've been uh, <laughs> doing all kinds of fine tuning. Uh, and like I said, this is the kind of thing I do for each material too. So. Um, I'll be able to load up material. I've been doing a lot of stuff with Iron Man. I've got a lot of pieces printed already. I've been doing a lot of stuff with 3PO and, oh yeah. So having two more machines that are, you know, upgraded, they're reliable and are working well and have the latest versions of Marlin, looking forward to that. So if you want to see what I'm working on, check out my social media links. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff on Instagram, on Facebook, and of course I do a few things on Twitter. And I'm doing a lot of the YouTube shorts. That's what the algorithm likes lately. So if you found me through the shorts, welcome aboard. Um, of course, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff down below. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool, and please, print safe.